remember uh, Chin on Monday? I was telling you about that. Steve will do it. Guy who went really bad on me. He was yeah. like defending Dana. And I, you know, I went dark a little bit. How I can kill people when it comes to hand to hand fighting. I will f you up. Unless your name's Francis Ngannou, Gordon Ryan, Tyson Fury, I will f you up. These are just facts. These are just facts. Brendan Schaub has reminded us this week yet again that he's the biggest loser on the internet. Whether it's getting trolled on Twitter and not realizing it, or going on a CTE rant on his live stream that nobody watches, and then clickbaiting his dying audience on the fighter and the kid. But it's not just that, he filed an appeal this week in court that doesn't make sense, so more on that towards the end, because no matter what this guy does, he finds a way to extract maximum damage and make himself look like an absolute tool in the process. He really has taken losing to a whole new level and almost turned it into an art form. So it all started with UFC 300. Our boy Bapa was a vocal critic of the event. He thought that the stakes weren't high enough and it was all for show, which isn't necessarily wrong or a bad take, but in the end, it was a pretty wild show. Most people I know enjoyed it. And so in true Dana White fashion, he had a little edit made up to call out all the critics of the event, which included Brendan Schaub. All right, so this is a... <laughs> This is pretty oh, interesting. Oh, this is interesting. So Dana White does a thing on, uh, shout out to Dana White. Yeah. So Dana White does this thing on uh, UFC 300. He basically made like his version of a diss track of all the people in MMA media. Not all. He left out a few, but some of the people in MMA media who were kind of critiquing UFC 300. And so he plays this video. Now, I think this was on Saturday, April 20th when he did this. Yeah, Saturday. So you can play the video, too. What's up, guys? As we rolled into UFC 300, uh, the MMA experts weighed in on what they thought of UFC 300. And for all the fighters that were on this card, when I said this is the greatest card ever assembled in the history of combat sports, this is what the media thought of you guys. It kicks off with me. Makes no sense. Is any fight on this card 300 worthy? No. <laughs> this is the most diabolically disappointing uh, UFC 300 announcement. Ooh, they did Jesse it dirty though. Kind of yeah, video's dope. It is dope. <laughs> yeah, it is so And it's awesome that he actually replied with respect. That's yeah, so, so awesome. Yeah, so I saw That's that cool. and then um what I put up there, I put why are you bring up old shit, yeah. you know? Like you just I put fair play UFC 300 was amazing and then Dana responded, "That's awesome. Hashtag #respect." Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Do you think Cringo Poppy will ever realize that Dana White thinks he's a joke? I mean, clearly the whole thing was a publicity stunt. Dana grew the UFC off the back of being the underdog that everyone wanted to ban. They were always second to boxing. Nobody took them seriously. So he's always going to use whatever negativity and hatred he gets to promote the UFC and prove everyone wrong. It's so formulaic, you could literally write an equation out for it. So then why is it that Brendan has to take everything so literally? And then you always have people like whenever Dana, you know, we've had our issues over the years, but it's all good, man. You know, it's all good. I give Dana the, you know, the credit for, you know, give me the career that I have, you know, if he didn't change the rules and do the Reebok deal, who knows what would have happened to me? You know, I probably would have stuck around to, to make the money and, but he didn't. And, you know, he changed the rules because that was best for his business. He wasn't trying to hurt me and took me a while to realize that, but that gave me the fuel to build the podcast and firing the kid and, you know, big Brown breakdown and do what I do. So, you know, I give, I should probably give him some sort of percentage, you know, <laughs> if he needed it, but I would, I don't want to, but. Oh, geez. I think I just vomited in my mouth a little bit. Of course, Brendan tries to turn this into a flex, but wait, it gets worse. So we all know who the Nelk boys are. If you don't, God bless you. You can turn this video off right now and go back to living your life with absolutely zero regrets. But for the rest of us, Dana White aligned himself with Kyle and his buddies, no doubt to capitalize on their audience and maintain relevance amongst a younger crowd. So after Brendan Schaub called out Dana for UFC 300, Steve Will Do It got onto Twitter and trolled him so badly that it was actually funny as hell. Dana White is a top tier human, Brandon Schaub, you're a goofball, I thought you were a former UFC fighter, you failed at comedy and you can't even talk UFC right. Brandon Schaub is a loser.
Then he took it down a notch and made fun of his name, saying Brandon Schaub, more like Brandon Slob, hashtag loser, followed by imagine being a former UFC fighter and get introduced by Dana White as a podcaster. Lol, Brandon Schaub, loser. So clearly, Steve had a few too many hard seltzers and decided to troll the cringe Papi, which honestly seems entirely appropriate. I mean, I agree with almost everything he said. He was speaking straight facts. But for our boy Bappa, he felt that he had no choice but to address Steve on his live stream earlier this week. What's it? Steve will do it. He came at me on Twitter. I was like, what? Like, Why though? I, he's close with Dana. And I think he's young. I don't know how old he is, but I think he's young. So maybe that's his way of like getting his boys back, which I respect. I get that. But this isn't, you're, you're, you don't know what you're doing. You, you're not educated on the dynamics of everything. And it, that stuff doesn't bother me. You know, uh, I've, I've dealt with much worse. He's defending his boy, which I get and I love. I do the same. I ride for my guys. But do a little research. I, I'm not the, this isn't it, bud. That, mm. This isn't it. You know, I have a, a, a background. So there's stuff you can go after. Yeah, I was at world champion. No, I'm not Kevin Hart or Joe Rogan. You know? So you can poke stuff at that. It's like, oh, you just don't know, Bubba. Failed comedian. Oh, buddy, you don't know comedy. You don't know comedy. That doesn't work. From your outside perspective, I'm not at Kevin Hart or Joe Rogan or uh, Sebastian's level. No. Does that mean I failed? Fuck then 99.999% of comics fail. If that's, your, if that's your level, then yeah, all of us are failures so for about five guys in the world to ever do it. Okay, this was absolutely wild. Brendan dedicated almost one hour of the Shorb Show, or whatever it's called, to discussing the Dana White Steve will do it drama. That's how much he doesn't care about any of this and it doesn't bother him. Almost an hour of an hour and 25 minute live stream. Yeah. This doesn't bother him one bit, and you could tell the comedy thing really got to him. For those of you who don't know, the cringe Papi had to scale back on his stand-up comedy commitments because he was struggling to sell tickets and was building a reputation for cancelling shows. So he pretended that he was spending more time with his family earlier this year as a cover for effectively retiring from stand-up comedy. And just quietly, on what planet are Joe Rogan and Kevin Hart in the same league of comedy? I should also correct him, he was exaggerating when he said there's only 5 successful comedians on the planet, there's actually 1,000 of them. Or was it 500? Nah, it was 250, wasn't it? Anyway, I do have to agree with Brendan on one thing, he definitely isn't a failed comedian. That would imply he was a comedian to start with. <laughs> Thank him B. But then things went a little dark. Brendan wasn't done yet. He leaned into it and he started throwing veiled threats towards Steve will do it. And don't forget, Bapa has no issues with him. None of this bothers him. He's completely cool with all of this. Just saying. Yeah, with Steve, I have no issues with him. He seems like a good guy. Anybody that knows him tells me he's a good guy. I don't know what he does. Maybe just ill-informed. But I'm, I'm, I'm easy to find. Super easy to find. Super easy to find. You know? And, and we have a mutual friend in Bradley Martin. I text Brad yesterday. You know, I talk to Brad probably once a week. Brad's a close buddy of mine. Helped me out, you know, with my energy levels and peptides and all. Like, Brad's my guy. Yeah. Absolutely adore Bradley. He's the fucking man. And he's best friends with Steve. So there's a mutual friend there. So I'm easy to find. You can get my number from Bradley. Uh, if there's something going on that I don't know about, you're so upset. I can meet you at Zoo Gym Culture, Zoo Culture, mm -hmm. uh, whichever location you want. We can meet there. We can talk about it. If you're so mad, we can go in the back room and figure it out. You sign papers that you're not going to sue or anything like that. We can figure it out. No, that, uh, like I don't, but you know what I'm saying? Like I know, that, that's I know how this goes. I never do that, but I know what you're saying. No, but I'm yeah. saying if he, like, if he's that mad, it's like. If he wants to yeah, hurt we can, you. Yeah, yeah, we can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have no problem with that. But you would never, I know you know, never. No, I don't want to. I, he, I, uh, he seems like he's small too. I don't, so it doesn't, like, I don't come off as a, as a bully, but no, remember, he came at me. So it's like, if you're that mad, that's an angle. I'm down. 
Okay, Brendan, there's this thing called the Second Amendment, and oh, never mind, let him have his fun. But all jokes aside, not everyone thought this was as cringe as I did. He actually had quite a bit of support for calling out Steve and saying, hey man, if you've got a problem, we can sort this out like men. And I'm not going to lie, I would love nothing more than to see our boy Bappa line up the Nelk boys and teach them a lesson one by one. The world would definitely be a better place after that. The thing is, though, he didn't just leave it at that. He went on and on and on. Now, I don't know if it was the Kratom or the Rogue Pouches, the Addies, or just too much coffee. Brendan went to extraordinary lengths to prove to everyone just how much none of this bothers him. Whatever can mean, trucking, car can mean, nobody that's ever come after me. I've, I've never been worried if you lock me in a room with them how it would go. I've never had a, a single person on this earth come after me that I couldn't beat up. And that's just facts. This isn't a bully thing. This isn't a cocky thing. So I think that's why it doesn't bother me because I know Steve or I know insert comic or insert podcast or insert whoever it is from anything that I do that talks shit about me. I know if we were in the same room, you would not talk to me that way. When it comes to hand to hand fighting, I will f you up. Unless your name's Francis Ngannou, Gordon Ryan, Tyson Fury, I will f you up. These are just facts. These are just facts. Now, we can live in a world where these YouTubers and the guys like Steve, his buddies around him are going, oh, dude, you should fight him. Oh, dude, I don't know, dude. He got knocked out by Noguera that time. There's that world on, that lives on social media and YouTube. That's not real. That is not, you cannot fight. I promise you cannot fight. Maybe you can amongst your boys and the, the YouTubers. Cool. That's not real, Bubba. This will not end well for you in any facet. This is the real world. You will get severely fucked up. And that's why I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. Yep, he is 100% cool with this. But you've got to admit, Bupper's right. It's all fun and games on the internet, but once the cameras and mics are turned off and it's just you and Brendan in a dark room, yeah, he's going to have his way with you. Hang on, are we still talking about fighting? The other thing is, to play devil's advocate, no one's calling him out to fight. None of us are saying, Bupper, you're a tool, let's fight, I'll smash you. So it doesn't really make sense to call somebody out to come and fight you when all they were doing was pointing out that you're a loser. It's like if a kid says to another kid that they're stupid and read too slow, and so the other kid says, yeah, but my dad's stronger than your dad. Yeah, but you're still a slow reader. Either way, Brendan's Sookfest apparently worked, or so he thought. To me, Steve was still trolling him and talking absolute shit. I want to take back anything I said about Brandon Schaub. The guy is a very nice person and I shouldn't have attacked him. I don't think he is a nasty person. My bad, Brandon Schaub. You're a good guy, I feel. Looked into you more. It's no more nasty people than 2024 and I don't believe you're nasty. He also said, I listened to him talk about me on his podcast and I'm like, this guy seems like an awesome guy. So I want to take back what I said. And so Brandon took the bait and replied with, all good, my brother. I'm so glad they managed to clear all this up and Bapa still has no idea that this whole thing was a massive joke at his expense. But wait, it gets worse. Oh man, this was cringe as hell. Let me explain. So, like I said earlier, not everyone shared my feelings about this whole situation. A lot of people sided with Bapa on this and thought it was about time that he called these clowns out and set them straight. The fact that Steve fake apologized apparently fooled a bunch of people into thinking Brendan had won, and so it wasn't all bad for our boy. But then, in true cringo puppy style, he took it too far and tried to milk it for everything. This was the thumbnail for the latest episode of The Fighter and the Kid. He's got Steve in the middle talking into a mic. It says they hashed out their beef. And to the average person, it looks like Bapa managed to get Steve on his podcast to settle this beef. Except it was pure clickbait. In fact, the clickbait was so bad that not only did they not get Steve on the podcast, they spent less than 60 seconds actually talking about it over the whole episode. I feel like most people are like, like, remember, uh, Chin on Monday, I'll tell you about that. Steve will do it guy who went really bad on me. He was yeah. like defending Dana. And I, you know, I went dark a little bit, how I can kill people. 
which was out of character for me, and I apologize. Uh, me and him connected. I thought we talked. Oh, you to, did? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because him and Bradley are super close, and Bradley texted me. He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna connect you with Steve." And when you talk to him, I'm sure he's a great guy, and you guys get along. And he, all yeah, he was like, "Oh, dude, I watch your podcast. Like, ah." Oh, he, you're actually a good guy. He's like, I was drunk, man. He's like, I was just firing off at the mouth. I love it. He was, I'm him. sorry, man. He was like, I didn't good mean Good for it. him. That's a man. And I told him, I said, I get it, dude. Yeah. It's all good. We're more similar than we are. you know. Of course. Good for him. Yeah, it was you great. You know who I like a lot? Luke Thomas, but I don't know him. Yep, that was it. And it wasn't the homeless cats that got their knickers in a knot. We all know Brendan's petty tricks, but it was actually his dying audience that started to turn on him. The Steve will do it clickbait was pretty shameless. Come on, guys, don't do this. He's not even on the pod. What the F? Clickbait. Three minutes 50 for five seconds of Steve will do it talk. Laughing my ass off. Not on the pod? Guys, this is ridiculous. Crazy clickbait to put in with the mic, which is from the Nelk podcast. Haha, <laughs> wow, what a misleading thumbnail. How is the headline about Steve will do it if you only talk about him for less than one minute? And that's how Brandon managed to take what little credibility he'd mustered through this fake beef and turn it into yet another massive L, all by himself. And the funniest part is the clickbait didn't even work. That episode has less views than they usually get, which makes it all so much better. This guy's a full-on train wreck at this point, and that extends to the courtroom. Here we go. All right, let's change gears. So, for those of you who don't know, a couple of years ago, Brandon sued a small YouTuber called Kyle Swindells, who goes by the name Unique. And earlier this year, the judge sided with the defendant, going against our boy Bupper, declaring that Kyle's use of clips from Brandon's podcasts fell under fair use, dismissing the case and leaving Bupper with an enormous legal bill with nothing to show for it. If you want the full breakdown, you can go and check out my video covering the legal dispute. But you would think that after making one of the biggest L's in internet history, Brandon would let it go, lick his wounds, learn his lesson, and go back into the hole that he came from. I mean, Kyle self-represented with the assistance of a ghost lawyer. Nobody knows who he is. It's a complete mystery. He operates from the dark using an untraceable email address, feeding Kyle everything he needs to make his legal filings and representations in court. Anyway, sorry. So you would have thought that Bapa would let it go now, but in true Brandon style, he had to make the whole situation worse by lodging an appeal. Honestly, this guy is the gift that keeps on giving. This is what it says. Reasons why oral argument should be heard. Plaintiff appellant, Thick Boy Productions, pause, respectfully requests that the court schedule and hear oral argument in this case. This case involves novel and important issues of copyright law and fair use, and how these legal standards should apply in the modern age of internet podcasts and YouTube. The main issue on appeal is whether Swindells has met his burden of showing that his extensive use of Thick Boys podcast episodes, while adding at most relatively short and insubstantial voiceovers, constitute fair use. So, if you recall, the judge agreed with the defendant on all the elements of fair use, except for one. She actually agreed with Thick Boy Productions that Unique had used more clips than were necessary for his commentary and didn't specifically comment, criticize, or analyze all of the copyrighted material to the extent that perhaps he should have. She said, All of the accused videos include segments of the copyrighted videos which Mr. Swindells did not criticize or comment on. This is actually something that I personally agree with. Too many commentary channels just dump clips into their videos and don't address them specifically or comment on them. They don't actually transform the material by giving it new context based on an opinion or perspective. They just dump whole sections of podcasts and say, look how stupid Bopper is, without actually explaining why he's stupid, which is actually quite an easy thing to do. Yet, Bapa still lost. Because the defendant satisfied all the other criteria so well, the judge had no choice but to rule in his favor via summary judgment. So if you want to know more about this appeal, I'm going to upload a full breakdown video on my Patreon going through all 60 pages of the appeal. I'm not going to do it here. It'll be far too long and not everyone will be interested. But in that video, I'm going to explain exactly why this appeal is doomed to fail, which has implications for all podcasters, including Joe Rogan. It all comes down to one specific thing that all of the circle jerk, never been funny comedy podcasters just can't seem to get their head around. So check out the link in the description to my Patreon, become a member so you don't miss out on that video next week. But that's it for now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you're not a regular of this channel yet, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you ended up enjoying this video. 
Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. You bully me, bro. I don't give a shit about your demon? UFC bullshit. Mm. I will fucking come right at you. I could pin you on the ground right now and put you my dick try. in your mouth. You could try. For no reason. You could try. And guess what? Just because it's the nice guess Saturday. Guess what? I would fucking come right to your house. Bang, no, bang, bang. No, you'd be dead, Joe. Would I?